Hey guys, so today I thought we'd do a little CRT, uh, cardio resistance training, and it's gonna be a little bit more steady state between the cardiovascular movements, which are without weights, and the strength movements that are with weights. So there's not gonna be a ton of variance as far as how your heart and lungs feel, um, maybe just a little bit more of the muscular effort uh, when we do the strength work, just because it's a little slower and obviously loaded. So let's get started. Good warm up. So I just want you to stand in open space and just start to march your feet right and left. Kind of let your spine grow a little bit longer, focus on that core bracing, yet some movement and ease. Take that march forward and back, just front and back, letting your arms swing naturally. We're gonna do four more just like this, basically like you would be doing a step up or a basic step. Now, instead of just moving forward, you're gonna go one forward, one to the right. One forward, one to the right. On that side step, I want you to give me a little depth change, almost like a little bit of a mini squat. Now, instead of that side step, give me a squat. Walk front, side squat. We're gonna do two more of these. On your squat, make sure your hips are driving back. This is your last time. I want you to change to the walk left foot, front and back. Just again, a little bit of an arm swing, letting your spine grow longer, focusing again on that core bracing. Three more like this. Just like the right side, we're gonna do one to the front, one to the side, out, out, in, in, left foot's forward. Two more like this, little depth change, down and up. Then instead of that side step, we're gonna take it into a squat. So walk forward and squat. Again, left foot walks forward. Squat, two more like this. Then we're just gonna combine the sides. One more each. With your right leg leading, walk forward. Side squat right. Walk left foot forward. Side squat left. We're gonna do one more each of those side squats. And then instead of both knees bent, we're gonna change it into a lunge side. Walk front, side lunge. Walk left, side lunge. Walk right, side lunge. Walk left, keeping the foot pattern. I want you to change the posing hand to that outer foot and give me a little bit more of a downward reach. So getting a little bit more open through the adductors. Take the opposite hand, so your right hand to the sky and your left hand to the sky. Getting a little bit looser in that rotation. Let's do one more. And then just right foot walks front and back. We're gonna do a little combination of what we just did slowly. One front, one side. One front, one side. Again, one front, one side. Now I want you to take this as fast as you can. Run front, run side. It's a lot of intricate foot patterning. Still thinking about your core center. Front and side. Give me eight more counts of this. Seven, six. Feels a little awkward without the step in front of us. Three. Two, walk left, just front and back. Now I want you to just take it to a basic squat, down and up. So we're gonna do two different cardio sections in each round. We have four rounds, and we're gonna do each of those rounds twice through. Now give me one full, two pulses quick, and stand up quick. One full, two pulses. One full, two pulses. On that quick pulse, I want you to really drive from the hips, almost like you're doing a bell swing. Hup. And we're gonna change it into a jump. So one full, 
two pulse, little jump, up, one full, two pulse, little jump, up, one full, two pulse, one full, two pulse. One more like this. Then I want you to grab your weights. In those weights that you choose, I want you to go a little bit, maybe lighter to start for a shoulder press, but I want you to bring your hands all the way to the sides, and we're gonna go into that side squat. Let's start with the right foot out to the side, out and in, left foot. So pretty similar to our cardiovascular section just a moment ago, but now we've got a lot of load. As you come up to center, I want you to give me an upright row. So a short lever, lateral raise. We're letting the shoulder blades work in upward rotation. We're gonna change that left side. You're gonna turn the hands, the elbows drop, shoulder press all the way down. Upright row, shoulder press. Row, press. Row, you've got two more. One more. Then I want you to drop one weight. Hold the weight that's remaining between both hands. Give me a reverse lunge right, a reverse lunge left. Then I want you to take that weight outside the left knee, outside the right knee. I don't know about you guys, but this strength segment feels a little bit more intensive cardiovascularly than the cardiovascular segment. So again, kind of a blending of effort. Instead of a press, I want you to reach overhead. Reaching, reaching. So more of a steady state kind of workout. Instead of a press, arc the arms. Seven. Notice that the forward knee is tracking right around that second and third toe. One more, lose the weight. We're gonna go back to the beginning, but start with our left foot. Give me one forward, one side. At any time, feel free to take a little pause break, have some water, but I'm gonna keep this pretty continuous. Trying to find the beat, because that's what this is all about. Take that motion and go fast, up and out. So like the right foot lead on the first round, trying to keep everything nice and solid from the pelvis upward as the legs are pretty chaotic. Eight more counts, seven, forward and side. Four, three, two, just give me a squat, down and up. Woo. Like the first round, one full, two quick pulse, and even quicker stand. One full, two pulse. On that two pulse, add your jump. Two more just like this. You can keep your forward position, or next time on that jump, I want you to give me a 360. So a little half, starting out a 360, a 180. Two pulse. 360 would be impressive. We're gonna do two more just like this. Full, two pulse, jump, full. Grab your hand weights, grab them. So again, for shoulder presses, I want you to give me a side squat to your left, a side squat right. And as you come center, both arms upright row. Starting to feel that steady, a little bit higher, probably still zone two, maybe bottom of zone three heart rate. Squat, rotate, press. 
upright, rotate, press. Four, three, two, last time, lose one weight, come back to those hands at your chest, lunge back left, and right, then press the weight towards your right knee, Make sure when you're lunging back that you're still loading that forward heel and feeling the front base ribs knit forward and down. Now I want you to add a press overhead. Instead of the press, next time, arc the arms. Eight, seven, longer lever, more torque, therefore more use of your core and hip structure to stabilize. One more, lose the weights. So we're gonna leave that series behind. Move on to our second of four. I just want you to give me a side step. Side step, music's changing, I gotta pick up the other beat. Left, right. Left, there it is. Four, three, give me two steps to your left and a knee. Two steps right, a knee. So we've already introduced a lot of that frontal plane or this lateral direction. On that knee, I want you to start to feel a little stronger, almost elbow to knee hit, hit. Two more slow, then like the front and side run that we did in the first round, I want you to take this fast. Shuffle, shuffle. Huh. Hit, hit. Starts with the foot, into the hip, and then into the torso for that brace of the knee hit. You have eight counts. Seven. Five. Three, two, step touch, just nice and easy, not out and in. And in between this, I want you to give me a jack and come center for two ropes. On that power jack, allow your toes and knees to rotate gently out with a slight forward lean and a hip hinge. So we're changing the angle or structure of integrity that's happening through that hip joint, those hip joints. Arm circle. So kind of similar to what we did with those squat jumps. Lots of power, not a lot of speed, like the beginning. You have six, five, four, three, that's it. Grab some weights for bicep curls. Then I want you to stand on both legs, hinge the hips back, the torso forward. Do that again. As you hinge back, sweep your right leg back, and then sweep your left leg back. As you sweep back, I want you to see how square you can maintain the hip position so the side that's elevating isn't getting a lot of height in variance from your stance leg. As you rise, give me two arms and a bicep curl. Do that again, other side. As you curl the arms, feel the strength in your mid back and a little depression in your lats. Kind of hugging the arms next to the side. Standing nice and tall, give me a straight up single curl. Down and up for eight, seven. I want you to feel those front ribs knit in and down with that chest and head up. Two more. 
One more. Lose those weights. Excuse me, lose one weight. Then I want you to find that left leg, excuse me, right leg back, left leg forward. Hold one weight above your head in that good shoulder flexion. Give me a stationary split squat, just down and up. Almost forgot there are two strength exercises per round. That right gluteal is so strong in driving the hip into extension. Now bend the elbows. You have four more just like this. Again, front base ribs knitting down to the front hips. That's it, lose the weight. Yes, you feel a little imbalanced, but we'll come back to balancing in the next round. So I want you to give me that side step. And like we did in the first round, I want you to give me two steps, a knee lift. Two steps, a knee lift. On that knee lift, swing the opposing arm across, hit, hit, get ready to speed it up, double time. One, two, hit, one, two, hit. So a little shuffle step, ha, ha. Feeling that strength in the torso and how it connects with the hip or the pelvic structure. Seven, six, four, three, step touch. And in place of the step touch, give me your power jack. Two ropes jumping in. Power into. Sweep the arms. Notice how with this round, there's more efficiency and a deeper motion and control of how you're executing. You have four. Two, that's it. Grab your weights for biceps. Come back to that standing position. Hinge forward two counts. And rise two. So ideally when you hinge, there's no change, especially in that mid to low thoracic spine. Sweep your left leg back. Sweep your right leg back. Notice how that efficiency of rolling the, the uh, femur underneath or inside that hip socket. So we're not just kick standing on the leg. When you stand, bicep curls. Can you have just as much energy on the lifting leg as you do in the stance leg? Stand nice and tall, give me a single count bicep curl. Down and up, eight, seven, four, three. Lose one weight. You always have the option to have two weights. Take your right foot forward, left leg back, arms overhead, stationary split squat. So a nice hollow belly from that front line. Good extension of the elbows and the head pulling back in alignment with the arms. Add the elbows, bend low and extend high. Six, five, power up that left hip extensor group, gluteals, hamstrings, two, Lose the weights. We're gonna leave second series behind. Move on to the third, twice through. I want you to step forward right, right, step out, step in, step back. Or creating a T with your feet. So it's forward, out, in, and back. T-step. 
like the first two rounds and the first two exercises in both of those rounds, we're gonna go for speed. With this pattern, pitch it up your tempo. I want you to feel the strength of how you hold yourself in the midline, letting the arms be loose, but in balance. Eight, seven, Four, three, two, just march. Right, left. Woo, starting to get a little sweaty. Nice, consistent effort. Step forward, right, lift your left knee, change sides. Instead of one knee with that left leg, repeat the knee three times. Change sides, repeater for three, two, change sides. So now we're gonna put a little bit more into that hip stability with a dynamic back leg. Give me seven repeaters. Three, two, switch, seven. We're gonna double up again. Three, two, 15. Just hang out, we'll, we'll stop together. Just focus on your form. Six, five, three, two, 15 other legs, other leg. Woo! Seven. We're gonna go back to that first side. Change, left knee, stay here. That seems daunting when I say just stay here. But you've already been here for 15. Make sure you are loading your right heel and hinging that right hip back. Instead of just to the back, tap side, tap back. Tap side, tap back. So we're just gonna do this repeater on this leg, this round. You have eight more. Seven, watch that right heel, make sure it's still down and your big toe mound, four, three, two, grab two weights. Think back rows. We may add an additional front raise as an option, but this time I want you to stand a little wider than shoulder than you were for the single leg hip hinge. You're gonna bend forward two counts, rise two counts. Do that again, hip hinge, so the fulcrum point right at the hip joint, reaching backwards or towards the wall behind you. Instead of four counts, take it down one, hold for two, three, come up on four. So we're just hinging with a little quicker emphasis to end point and to beginning point. On your holds next time, give me a close elbow row, three. Do it again, hinge, three rows. Three. One more with three rows. Then we're gonna revisit that two count hold. Down one, one row. Stand up, do it again, row once. Because of that hip extension and drive back to standing, I want you to effort that drive through your arms. Give me a front raise, palms face in. Do that again, front raise. Be sure not to lean back in excess. Feel those front ribs brace. We have three more. Two, last time, option, lighten your load. We're going for a long arm sideways. Find a sumo squat position, just the legs down and up. As we always talk about, heel load, but now I really want you to feel the midsole or the midline of the foot, so you're not rolling off that instep. 
which is the tendency in this position because of that externally rotated hip. As you rise, laterally lift the arms. Seven. I want you to notice the motion originating from your shoulder blade, not the arm lifting and impinging into that socket. That's it, lose the weights. Let's come back, round two. With your left foot, I want you to walk forward once. Step wide, walk in, step back. So your T-step. Again, T-step, front, side, in, and back. Front, side, in, and back. We're just about 30 minutes here. Take this motion as fast as you can, up and out. Notice the coordination difference leading left versus right, and any differences in excess twisting in your midline of the spine. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, just march. I wonder about you guys. That's a lot of ball of the foot. Give me a left knee forward, a right knee forward. Sorry, a left step, right knee forward. Give me three repeaters. Change sides, left knee three times. So again, feel that hinging, that holding, while we're dynamically shifting that back leg. Instead of three, it's seven. Get into your left heel. Last three, two, change sides, seven. Like we did on the other side, 15, 14. Actually, just hang out, I'll give you the cue. Focus on what is stable, that left foot, the left hip. Last three, one, two, change sides, 15. Again, focus on what is stable. Right foot, right knee, right hip. Three, two, change sides, just stay here. So we need to balance out with what we did, standing on our right leg. I want you to give me eight more straight back. Then we're gonna dynamically shift from frontal plane back to the sagittal. So tap side, tap back. Over the time or course of this set, I want you to notice if you start to offload that left heel. Get back into it. Little oscillation in that pulse of the left hip. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three. That's it. Grab your weights for rows. Want you to hinge down two counts and stand two counts, getting that flow. And again, the whole pelvis, the acetabulum or the hip socket rolling over the femoral head and rolling back. So you're having a lot of this twisting naturally occurring within that hip socket. Brace your core, down count one, hold two, three. And rise up, again hinge. Hold, on that hold, give me three rows. Three, two, rise up. Do that again, hinge, row three. Stand up, you have two more like this. Neck is long from the shoulders. One more like this. Then we make it a little bit more challenging. On that hip hinge, give me one row. Stand tall, snap it up, one row. Here's your front raise, optional add when you stand, core brace. Seven, only an option, maybe it's a single front raise instead of a bilateral. You have four. Really strong in that torso brace with the glute and hip extension at the, to the very top of the motion. One more. 
Option to lighten your load, lateral raises, sumo squats, just down and up. So very continuous, feeling a little bit more muscularity involved versus heart rate, but not a big difference. Go ahead and add your lateral raise. Still that long torso. We're gonna do a few more reps than last time, which was only eight. You have four. Three. Two. Lose those weights. We're finally gonna get to the floor a little bit here. So I want you to find a wide position to squat. Plant your hands down. Walk back to a plank. With your left foot, step forward. Tap your right foot in. Walk back. Find that strong plank. Right foot forward. Tap your left foot in. Walk back. Walk forward back to your squat. Stand all the way up. Variation, I want you to squat. Jump back. Step or jump both feet forward to one side, bunny hop. Other side, bunny hop. Jump back to your squat, stand all the way up, or jump to stand. Let's go. You decide the positions. I want you to notice that really strong plank position, regardless of your jumping, your walking, or stepping. You have eight more counts. Six. You have four counts. Hold your plank. Give me a knee tuck, then the other. Run it out. Eight counts. Seven. Five. Four. Three. Two. Come on up. Whew. I want you to grab one weight. Whew. That got me a little bit more. Bigger motions. This one's gonna be a combination of a hip bridge and a sit up. So I want you to start with that weight between both hands. Lay it out without touching the ground. So you have to recruit so much from the connection of your blades into your torso. Then as you sit up, I want you to reach forward or even all the way overhead. Lay it out, arms are off the floor, hip bridge. Press down, reach all the way up. Let's do that a little bit faster. Roll back, hip bridge. Sit up, press. Roll back, hip bridge. Sit up, press. When you reach that hip bridge, I want there to be a lot of strength in your base front ribs. The drive from the hip joint right at the gluteal fold. You have four more reps. Three. Two. One more. Woo. Take that weight to the outside of your left hand. Either on your knees or toes, find a push-up position. So hands are wider than shoulder. Neck and torso are aligned, so we're not hinging and definitely not jutting. Lower down, press all the way back up. Pick up that weight on the left, put it outside the right hand. Lower down, bring it up, take that weight on the right, cross it over to the left. Now do that a little bit faster. Down up, cross over, down up, cross over. Can you keep your glutes strong and that hip extension braced with the front ribs? Press, press. When you lift that weight to cross, unlike what I just did, can you keep everything nice and steady through that midline of your spine and hips? Four. Three. Neck is still long, open neck to shoulder. Last time. 
That's it. Lose the weight. Come back to standing. Last round, last series. You're going to squat, jump or walk back, bunny hop or sidestep, jump or stand up, pitch up your tempo. You have eight counts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Hold your mountain climbers, knee pulls. Last round, eight, seven, five, three, have a seat, grab one weight. Find your full sit up, your hip bridge, sit up, hip bridge, eight, last four, really drive from the hips on that bridge. Height isn't of importance, just that strength of connection, hips to spine. Find your push-up position. Knees or toes, strong plank, lower down. Pick up that weight, cross it over, reset, lower down. Pick up that weight, cross it over, go faster. Down up, cross. Down up, cross. Can you feel how strong your glutes are engaged? down. Nice job, you guys. Go ahead and bring yourself forward and up. I want you to land in a side lunge with a left leg bent, right leg straight, right leg flat, or right leg extended, right foot flat. So getting a little bit of this length in the long adductors, take that right hip angle towards your left inner heel. So you're getting a little bit of a pelvic shift off to the right oblique. Excuse me, left oblique. Then gently turn this into a runner's lunge facing that left wall. Get that hip extension and that drive of the left uh, hip down to that forward leg. go ahead and release that. Bend that back knee. I want you to sit tall or stand tall. Push into that left foot. Reach around with your right hand. Gently grab a hold of the foot, ankle, heel. Whatever feels good to create some extension of that right hip. And especially coming into the front of the thigh. Gently release that down. Rotate over onto that right leg bent. Lateral lunge, left foot flat. Rotate into your runner's lunge, right leg bent, left leg extended. Again, drive from those left hip extensors, your glutes, your hamstrings, as you sink with that forward right hip. So everything feeling heavy towards the ground. And then lower that right, excuse me, left knee. Walk yourself to an upright position. Reach back with that left hand. Grab a hold of the left foot, ankle, heel, 
whatever feels good. And as you gently drive the hip forward, I want you to notice some more bracing. Getting the whole front of the leg, incorporating the extensors of the hip, excuse me, the flexors of the hip, especially from the last series. And then go ahead and release that, but now I want you to come to both leg kneeling, tuck your toes, and I want you to find your hands on the heel of your feet, or on the heels of your feet. Give me again that hip extension, that core bracing, but now feel your sternum lift and a little bit of shoulder extension or rotating the chest open. Allow your chin to lift without collapsing into the upper back. Squeeze your glutes. Again, give me a little bit of that front rib base pulling down towards the front hips. Then take your left arm, reach it to the sky and look back over that right shoulder. Come back to center, left hand comes down, right hand comes up, look over that left shoulder. Gently release, come all the way up to standing. With your feet a little bit wider than shoulders, circle your arms up overhead, look up to the sky, take a nice full deep breath in this extended reach, and exhale all the way out. Have a fantastic day, you guys. See you next time.